Hello YouTube, Tridoft here, and today we're back with some more Fire Emblem Three Houses, and we're going to continue our Church of Seros playthrough. So we're at the very beginning, just finished the first mission. Uh, we're about to go... Part 1. White Clouds. Great Tree Moon. Three Houses. We're about to go to the monster for the first time. I just think it's funny that it just sounds like Gerald saying yeah, random words on all the title cards. The mountains have begun to scatter, and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fogland, heralding the start of a new year. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. <coughs> Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. Now that we got that exposition out of the way. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. I think the main thing I just like about female Violet is that her eyes are just a, a little too big. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. It's a really neat shot. I wonder, did the flow of time bring you here? It's been years since I've last set eyes on this place. I'd be forced to see her now. You saw her in the courtyard earlier, didn't you? The Archbishop. Lady Rhea. As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Jeff. My name is Sethic. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder... Was it the will of the goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. So I see. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child. But I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you... 
I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? A fine name indeed. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officers Academy. Hmm. Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Given how big of a body this uh, church and Knights of Seros are, I don't know how he avoided them for so long. Force back into the Knights of Seros. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. Nothing like that. They want you to teach, by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officers Academy, right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Alois went and recommended you to Lady Rhea. So, you must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. I don't know what she's thinking, making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. Oh, it's you then? So young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated. As you well know, I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officer's Academy. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. Of course. Before I came here, I belonged to a renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? The Middlefunk Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then, it seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine, I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officers' Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire, their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan the leader of the Alliance. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch, but they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow, but that should get you going. Good luck. You'll need it. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to me, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Gerald's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Gerald character? 
Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flane is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadif, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mark. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence. Here we get a little look at the students of all the houses. Starting with the Golden Deer and Claude. I think Marianne has, has insomnia. Of course, here, Black Eagles with the Edelgard. with Dimitri. I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers Academy, correct? To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Please let me know if you accept it. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? Alright, so she just wants us to go talk to each leader. And they will give us the lowdown on each of their students. Ha! Ah, I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but they ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. Can't entrust students to someone who's abandoned them once before. Huh? You saved the lives of the students you came across. That, at least, was admirable. Now you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery and see that you greet everyone. So for this exploration bit, I'll probably skip through a little more dialogue unless it's something very plot relevant. But like, like I said before, I'll leave enough time for it to be read. Maybe not the whole thing. Voice acted. But the voice acting is really good. Uh, so I I do tend to at least show a good, good amount of it. So, you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Presberg. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more? Okay. So we gotta go through these anyway. I'm just gonna skip well, through them for now. Uh, 
More or less you have Edelgard, her right hand man who wants nothing to do with anyone else. Ferdinand who's very proud of his uh, house and his family. Uh, Lenhart who likes sleeping and uh, studying. Uh, Chris and that's it. Caspar who loves fighting and that's it. Bernadetta who is kind of a shut-in. Uh, very shy. A little eccentric. Dorothea. The uh, singer and person who just uh, for that MRS degree. Uh, Petra, your uh, person from far away. A little like Athena, I suppose. Greetings. You must be the new professor. What a pleasure. As for me, my job is to stand here at this glorious entrance and leisurely watch over the comings and goings of everyone. Make folks smile, you know? Uh, and by that, I mean to vigilantly guard this entrance with my very life. No levity whatsoever. As Oops. Okay. I do like the gatekeeper. Everyone likes the gatekeeper, though. These people just talk a little bit about each house, the people standing outside, which I don't really need to do because I kind of already got the lowdown. So here we have Golden Deer. Oh, Claude's outside. We talked to Claude and Dimitri first. Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Leicester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that in this. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more? I do like Claude a lot. I'm not as interested in his uh, route just because the, the perspective of the Golden Deer doesn't interest me quite as much. I'm not as big a fan of a lot of the people in this house, but... I'll definitely get around to his route eventually. Your interest, have I? But so we have Claude, the schemer, Lawrence, who's here, all about being right. a noble and also trying to hit on women-ish, kind of, um, in his own way. He comes from a uh, Raphael, all about training and eating. He Ignatz came yeah. from some merchants and is all about art, and painting, and stuff like that. I said the young mage who has kind of a complex about it, her age that is. Marianne is Mar Marianne, uh, always kind of though. sleepy and shy, a little like Bernadette, I guess. Hilda, kind of the opposite. Uh, really just known for being a little lazy, for her own reasons. And Leone, who's all about Gerald and really nothing else, and implies that you aren't enough about Gerald. And let's go talk to Dimitri. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the curt. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathen, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, welcome to the monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Okay, so you have Dimitri. Me? A uh, very kind guy, but also very angry uh, underneath. To do, kind of like Hubert, really all just all about Dimitri, but less uh, evil seeming. Felix, is the Felix, who really only cares about being the strongest around. He's the adopt he has Ash, just kind of an all around nice guy, kind of timid, but really friendly. Sylvain, is the, Sylvain, uh, Sylvain the well. typical flirt with everyone guy. There are a lot of comparisons to Sane from FE7. Uh, Mercedes, definitely carefree indeed. Really, not a whole lot to say about her. She's also very friendly though. Annette is Baron Dominic. She's cheerful and hardworking. Annette, super studious, also very friendly. Ingrid. Ingrid is Count Gallitz. She is. Um, don't know as much about her. Um, definitely uh, nice enough. Very, very knightly, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, I also, I don't know much about her like real background, but I, okay. I, I've seen implications that she's like a little racist. So maybe if I end up recruiting her, I can like support her and figure out uh, what's going on there. Uh, you must be that renowned mercenary. 
My name is Lawrence Hellman. I'm just gonna talk to everyone and get there Hi. quick. So you're the skilled mercenary who saved Claude. Oh, you are? It's such an honor to meet you, Ignatz Victor. And I am Lysithia Vol. Hey, are you that mercenary? I'm Hilda Valentine Goneril. <laughs> Marianne von Edmund, are you joining the Knights of Saros or something? Okay. Are you someone's guest? The dining hall's that way, if that's what you're looking for. No, Raphael. That's Captain Gerald's kid. Hi, I'm Leonie Pinelli, Captain Gerald's first and greatest apprentice. I'm sure he's told you about me. Nice to meet you. I'm Raphael Kirsten. Who are you again? Oh, Raphael. Well, well, it must be my lucky day today, being approached by such a beauty. I'm Sylvain Jose Gautier. Jose. Huh? Hi there. You must be the one everyone's talking about. I'm Ash. Great to meet you. This here is to do. I have heard that you rescued his highness. Should you ever require my strength, please know that I will hasten to repay this debt. heard all about what you did from Prince Dimitri. As a citizen of Fargus, I thank you. He also said you're quite skilled. And he doesn't just say things like that. I look forward to sparring with you and beating you. Felix, must you always speak of fighting right away? Oh, and uh, you may call me Ingrid. And who's this? You don't look familiar at all. Oh, mercy. Do you think this is that mercenary people have been talking about? Now that I think about it, that does sound like something Dimitri may have said. I suppose you'll be enrolling at the Officers' Academy too, then? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Mercedes, and this is my best friend. I'm Annette. It's nice to meet you. Mercedes. Okay. Hey. Oh. I'll talk to our Black Eagles here. Oh, uh, not you. Bernadetta, this is no stranger. Our house leader owes this person a great debt. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Are you going to join our class? Oh. Well now, you don't have a familiar face. What brings you here? Oh, my name is Dorothea. Is it true that you saved Edelgard? That's incredible. The name's Caspar, by the way. Lenhard. Goodbye. Jeez, Leonard. How'd you get into the academy with those manners? So, are you a student here too? Maybe we'll be in the same class. I like how Leonard's goodbye sounds like the old AOL logout. I am Hubert, a humble servant of Lady Edelgard. I heard you came to the aid of her highness. This is Petra. She has come all the way from Bridget. Back on her archipelago, she is actually a princess. Hello, I am called Petra. I don't think I really have anything else to explore, but uh, yeah, Hubert's interesting. I, based on just his like design, I didn't think I would like him very much, but his voice acting is really good, so I ended up kind of enjoying him a little bit more. What do you want? I am Yuritsa. I teach here weapon instruction. These are the training grounds. Goodbye. Speaking of voice acting, Drake's is a very interesting fella. Okay, so I believe I've spoken to everyone. Oh, I can't just fast travel there. Oh, it's like I can't just go this way. I do still need to talk to the professors, so I'll do that real quick. And Cyril. I'm real busy, so could you please move along now? Thanks. Okay, now, what else did Lady Rhea need doing today? Okay. Here I am again, the office of the Captain of the Knights. That's it. I'm merely here to assist. Apparently, the current captain is getting on in years. I hear the captain has a hard time keeping up with the responsibilities of the job. Ah, that's where I come in. Put a lot of trust in people that they don't this really know that well. This is my research laboratory. I've worked hard to furnish it with the rare materials and purpose-built equipment required for my work. Hey. Hello, Professor. 
Professor. Dropping by so soon? Are you ill? If you're ever wounded or sick, do feel free to drop by. Or if you would like a nice cup of tea. I do think it's funny. I, as a male bilith, she immediately tells you to, that she likes that you know what you're looking for and to lock the door. To which she kind of is just oblivious. Okay, so that is everyone we can talk to. So we'll head on back and talk to Rhea and get things moving. How are you enjoying your time at the Academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. Okay, so like I said, we are going to actually go uh, Edelgard's route, but hers is the only one of the three that diverges into two routes, so we're, I'm going to go in. So you have chosen the Black Eagles led by Edelgard, correct? I'm going to go the non-Crimson Flower route. Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flay. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. A new addition to the Officers' Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please, do not disappoint the Archbishop. Wait, so our new professor is you? I didn't see that one coming. Easy, Caspar. Aren't you being a bit rude? You know it's a waste of time to expect politeness from him. It will be a pleasure learning from you, Professor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to take a nap. me too much either. <sighs> I'm sorry for the chaos you've walked into. <laughs> I love that she's turned I around. You're rather close in age, Professor. I hope you do not mind if we treat you like one of us. In our class, we try to treat each other as equals, despite any differences in age or status. Personally, I would love to include you in that inner circle. You have a gut, Professor. I will take great joy from your teachings. Petra, I believe you mean to say that our professor has guts. That's a bit different from having a gut. You can't go around saying someone so slim and attractive has a gut. <laughs> oh, uh, please take my apologies. I have not yet mastered this language. Professor, I want you to know that it's perfectly acceptable for you to treat me as you do the others. I may be the Imperial Princess, but here at the Academy, I'm just another student. That said, know that I have high expectations of you, and high hopes, but I'm certain you can lead the Black Eagle House to greatness. Sure, sure. Now let's break the ice with a training session. I want to see our new teacher in action. Why will the ice be broken? Is this a custom I have missed in my studies? Not real ice, just the ice of, um, well, it just means let's get to know each other. I don't want to train. Let's stay in the classroom and learn from a book. Let's all calm down and have a nice cup of tea, how about? Doesn't that sound lovely, Professor? I know we all agree to treat each other as equals, but there is a limit to what I can tolerate. The esteemed Black Eagle House requires order. <laughs> Looks 
looks like your first job will be to quiet down this racket. I don't envy you. Uh, they're not normally this... rowdy. I do hope you can manage, Professor. Alrighty. So, uh, after this loading screen, I'll probably actually go ahead and end this episode. It's been a fairly long episode with not a whole lot of action. It's been all story and speaking to people and meeting people, but that's okay. The next, uh, next episode should include the mock battle, as well as probably a little more exploration of the monastery. Here we have our monthly calendar. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. I suspect as much. Yes, as I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Yes, of course. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Hmm. What could this line here be indicating? What in the world? Interesting fellow. That Hanneman. Alright, so every Saturday you get to pick what you want to do. So I'm going to... Professors of the Officers Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule, so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month, and when. Okay, so in the beginning you don't really get choices. You have to uh, go through the one that uh, doesn't have grayed out. Okay, so like I said before, we are in New Game Plus, so before we end the episode, I'm just going to go ahead and go over what that means. Uh, so for one thing, you can change units' appearance to what they looked like uh, in the second half of the game, uh, when everybody kind of changes portraits. Uh, there are also options for hair, but I don't... I, I, well, I guess it's, maybe it's only for Edelgard. Or select few. Uh, I don't have those options. I can only change the people that I, uh, or I guess, well, I guess it's anyone that I have in my class. So, um, but the most important thing is with your renown, which pretty much everything you can buy in this journal here costs renown. You can use it to upgrade your professor level, which will allow you to do more every day off, which um, is really good. Because if you can do more activities, that means you can build bonds with your uh, with students faster, as well as train up your own skills a little faster. So I'm going to be trying to recruit a lot of students this time around. Uh, last playthrough, I believe I only recruited two in the first half of the game. I got one in the second half. Um, and one of them is uh, Sylvain, who is very easy to get. 
But, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the trick where you can just raise uh, support levels with students. And if you do that, then there's a chance they will just ask to join your class straight out. Once they get to, I believe, a B support. So I'm going to be using all these extra professor uh, activity points to try and build bonds a little quicker. And I'm going to work on skills I need to recruit a few students that I uh, am looking to recruit as well. So we'll go ahead and level up a little bit here. And it's 500 per half step. So I'm going to just go to B for now. And I figure the rest of the game I'll get enough points to slowly work my way up to A+. Uh, you can also just purchase supports, but only supports you've already seen. So, like in the previous game, uh, these are people that I had, well, the people that are not completely locked out are people that I had at least a C support with. And some of them you can see I got all the way up to A and S supports. Um, so you can actually just buy these if you're wanting to hurry things along a little faster in terms of supports. Uh, another thing you can do is actually buy weapon skills and magic and uh, movement and all that based on what you've already uh, accomplished in your previous new game. So I could get I buy this up to an A in swords so I could upgrade her to an A if I want to spend that many points. Uh, I'm going to hold off on spending any of these for now though until I kind of decide what I want to do with her. I have a vague idea. My plan for this playthrough actually is to go a little bit off class. Um, more so just instead of going with uh, everybody's natural talents. I'm going to go with maybe one of each person's and then spend a little more time building a little off talent uh, things. I'm not going to go with the weaknesses or anything because that would just take way too long to grind those up. But we'll, 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 we'll mix it up just a little bit with this playthrough. So, but I'll, I'll mess with that a little bit later. You can also buy previously, if you've mastered a class, you can buy the uh, master ability from that class if you would like. And you can buy items that will give you the same effect as Chris. Uh, and I'm not sure why some of these say I've already acquired them. I don't know if they're, I suppose maybe they're in my uh, storage right now, but uh, either way, I'm going to end this episode here, and in the next episode I'll go ahead and do all the quests around the monastery for now. And then I'll probably go ahead and proceed to do the mock battle. So, uh, thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I'll stick you. <laughs> I hope you'll stick around so I can see you in the next video. Bye, guys.